Well, good afternoon and welcome as we continue our journey through God's Word here at Good Shepherd with our lunchtime uh, Bible class. If that's when you're uh, watching this uh, Bible study and uh, going through the Word of God with me. Right now we are rejoicing in the book of Romans, the appointed epistle lesson for uh, the church uh, during this uh, time of summer uh, through the month of July and then August and the beginning of September. So a lot of look at the book of Romans and I know that as I journey through this book and as you journey through this book with me that we can really remember and, and rejoice uh, that God is with us and how he saves us and how he so longs uh, for all people to be his. And so let's begin with the word of prayer. Again, the portals of prayer for July through September. Father in heaven, you promise that your word works, for it points to your son, the word made flesh. It accomplishes the purpose for which you sent it, accusing us of our sin and assuring us of your forgiveness. Confident in that pledge, I ask you to bring great blessings to me and others wherever your word is spoken, sung, taught, read, and heard through Jesus Christ, its center and focus. Amen. And yes, the word, the Bible, is always about the word made flesh, Jesus, and what he has done for us. Today our theme for rejoicing in Romans is a promised, promised. What has God promised to us? How do we receive what God has promised to us? And how we can rejoice and be assured that we have received uh, what he does promise to us. The image today to begin our focus on promise, it's faith alone. Faith alone. It's believing in God, recognizing that who he is and his plan and design for us and for all people, and then knowing uh, what the outcome of our faith is in Christ, namely that we are saved, that we are heirs of everlasting life, as Paul likes to talk about a lot uh, throughout uh, the book of Romans, salvation uh, by faith alone. So let's begin then in Romans chapter 9 today, God's sovereign choice, uh, so God's divine choice, God's authority in making a choice, um, the way God wants things, desires them to be. So he says, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears, wit bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Now here we have this wonderful heart of Paul, and I hope the wonderful heart that all Christians have. It is that if he, if Paul, if you or I would be cut off from Christ, pardon the screen there, cut off from Christ, that others would benefit from it. So it's that idea that if I would lose my life and someone else would be saved as a result of that, I would willingly do so. And Paul is talking about his own heart for the lost. And in this, in this uh, teaching of Paul, he's talking about the Israelites here. My kinsmen according to the flesh, they are Israelites. And to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. So we talk about the children of Israel. We remember that these are God's chosen people. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, whose name is changed to Israel. And then all of his descendants. And so when we remember how God chose them, how God planted them into their own land, and provided for them, his hand was upon them and 
with them came the covenants, came the law, the worship, and the promises. God establishes all of this through this people throughout the Old Testament. The book of Leviticus uh, with the ceremonial worship and all that's taking place uh, within that. Um, the law given uh, in the book of Exodus and reminded in Deuteronomy. So God's people have been chosen. God's sovereign choice. These are my people from all the other people of the world. And God shows uh, that he is their God. And he gives them all what they need to have a life in him and a life of love for one another. So to them belong the patriarchs, David, the kings, all of this. And from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. So ultimately, from your offspring, all the world will be blessed, talking about Abraham, finally leading to Christ, upon whom all are blessed. But now becomes the anguish for Paul. Paul is heartbroken. That's what the image is saying here. Have you ever been heartbroken before? And you put your, your love towards someone and they don't reciprocate. Or you put your love for someone and it lasts for a while and then it goes away. I mean, when you invest yourself in someone else and they don't respond, uh, anytime you put yourself out to someone uh, and show that you care and, and love them and, and will do anything for them, and they don't respond, uh, it is it's heartbreaking because of the investment that you're making into it. And Paul is heartbroken on behalf of the children of Israel, uh, just as God is heartbroken on about his people who, although have been chosen, although have received all these signs, um, although have recognized, should recognize God's hand in their lives, so many rejected Jesus. So many refused to believe. And it's not as if, as Paul's going to say here, that the word of God was in some way void, or God's word didn't accomplish what it was meant sent to do. They continued to despise the word. So, this is what Paul is lamenting here. But it is not as through the, though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring, but through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. So what Paul wants to remind us here is how we can access uh, to be, be children of God. And as I was thinking about having access to being children of God, I, I used this image here. Let me go back to it. And this is an image of Washington, D.C., uh, and the turnstiles at their metro stops. One of the wonderful things about going to D.C., first and foremost, is seeing their monuments and seeing all of the historical sites and learning, but the way you can do that. Uh, the metro system, you can you know, hop on a, a, a train and get wherever you need to go and just walk uh, to that location. But the question remains, how, does one, uh, how is one able to board the train? How can one get on the metro? And that's the same question as how is one a child of God? How does one qualify for that? In order to get on the metro system, you have to have a ticket, something you have to pay, something you have to do. So how does one know that they are a part of the promise? How does one know that then they are connected to Jesus? Because that's what the promise is all about. A Savior who would come to redeem all people. And this is 
how this question is formulated and worked through by Paul. Is our um, relationship to God one by right, by birth, so that I can say I'm a children, child of Abraham, and yet if I don't believe in Jesus, do I qualify as a child of God? But I have this birthright, I have this paper that says, well, my descendant was such and such. Don't I ultimately, uh, automatically become a child? And I automatically saved. It would be maybe in, you know, in a similar situation that you look at your history and you say, well, Vince Lombardi uh, was my descendant. And because Vince Lombardi is my descendant, I have right to a seat at Lambeau Field. A right to that seat every time they play. I get to go because I'm a descendant. But that's not how it works, does it? Uh, you have to have a ticket. You have to qualify for it. And what we are reminded in Matthew chapter 3, uh, John the Baptist saying these words, and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. So when people were trying to qualify for salvation through being descendants and rejecting Jesus, John is saying, no, that's not going to make a difference. I can raise up other children and um, you are not qualified uh, because of your, uh, who your father is, because of your uh, birthright, because of anything uh, that comes uh, from your own flesh. And this is why Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 3 why this is impossible and how we can be united in Christ. Because whether you're a Greek, whether you're an Israelite, whether you're whatever the case may be, we all have sinned, and we all fall short of the glory of God. So when we understand this, we're all at the same beginning point, regardless of our ancestry. But what is necessary is that God then makes it possible for us to receive the promise of salvation by his grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation, a sacrifice by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, meaning his divine choice, his divine power, just as the beginning, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness as the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So that before God, without Jesus, even with our ancestry and being a descendant of whoever, we are still sinners and still judged to eternal death. But when we, by faith, believe in Jesus, we become rescued. We are saved. And so then Paul continues, and what becomes of our boasting? Do we say, well, I am saved because of who I am, my ancestor, because of the law? No, but by the law of faith. That's how we boast. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. And this is what is important. Being a descendant of Abraham is great uh, to have experienced all of what God directly showed to you. But salvation also has come to the Gentiles, you and me, non-Jews. And it's because God wants all to be saved. Using that nation as uh, the one in which we can learn from, but also that the promise goes beyond them. And this is what it says here. Uh, is it that God is a God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also, since God is one. 
He will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Faith becomes the link. And this is why Paul and the disciples rightly understood Jesus saying, go and make disciples of all nations. And witnessing that as they taught the word of God, the Holy Spirit brought both Jew and Gentile to faith. So no longer is there a separation, no longer are, are, is there division, but all are one in Christ. And when we then look at our relationship with God, being a child of God, we too rejoice that it is by faith. We believe in Jesus, that he died and that he rose again, and that because we believe in him, we will not perish forever in sin, but we have been rescued unto eternal life. This is the gospel. This is how one is received uh, by God into everlasting life. And it is a real source of joy for us, isn't it? It is certain for us uh, to know that Jesus has redeemed us and we believe it uh, through his word. So our qualifications don't matter in order to be saved. Jesus has done it for us, and it's a gift uh, by God's grace through faith. Our works, our effort, are a result of that. We should show forth that we are saved and that we love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. But in no way do we qualify as children of God uh, apart from faith. And so now we think about how one, you know, has access to God. Through his word, in baptism, God brings us, he keeps us in faith. Holy communion strengthens our faith so that we always know uh, that we are a part of God's family. That we are saved because Christ alone. Well, I'm glad that you're able to join me today for Bible class. I'm glad that we share this faith together. Uh, we'll continue this uh, Bible study uh, series, maybe a little different down the road where people are present and um, we'll be still studying God's Word, but maybe have a little question and answer and get a feel for uh, those who are attending Bible class. But I hope that you have a wonderful day today, continuing God's Word and the strength that it gives.